Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So this mess uh, that you see here is just a project that I, I, I finished uh, one minute ago. So I decided to make immediately a video because I'm quite happy and uh, this took a few hours. So I'm pretty excited and happy that at the end uh, everything worked. So this is just a very simple uh, a transistor amplifier. Uh, I say simple for, uh, for many people, but not for me. I mean, this is just uh, the, uh, the well-known uh, common em emitter amplifier and it's just basically this circuit but uh, you know i it took me some time because i really wanted to digest uh, the math uh, behind it and uh, if you really want to understand what's going on uh, there are quite a few calculations uh, to be made and uh, and so it took me a few hours and uh, i think now i kind of digested it uh, more or less comfortable with the behavior but uh, yeah i'm not i mean i would lie if i say that i understood everything so it's something uh, it's something very interesting actually to to experiment with uh, with calm and uh, you know not, not just copy these schematics but try to follow what's uh, what's going on anyway this is not a uh, this is not a video about uh, about uh, the about the amplifier so what uh, what is exciting for me is uh, what i'm doing now with the amplifier so the amplifier is at the moment receiving a signal from here which is going uh, to the amplifier and I'm probing the output of the amplifier with this uh, scope, which is connected uh, to the oscilloscope, okay? Um, right, so the scope is reading at the moment uh, uh, the um, output of the amplifier. As you can see, at the moment uh, we have uh, about uh, a point 0.1, I mean, you cannot see, but it's, uh, the, the voltage is set at uh, point 0.1 uh, volts per division. So it's about... Uh, 0.2 uh, volts up and 0.2 volts down so about uh, 0.4 volts uh, peak to peak okay so um, the input uh, that is going to an amplifier is a weak signal coming up out of my uh, mixer so this is the mixer I, I played with in my previous episode and so I'm still experimenting with it and uh, let me show you the, the, the current setup that I have here oops okay sorry uh, so let me see if uh, I'm not sure if you can read it properly but um, anyway so at the moment my signal generator here my siglent is set in channel 1 at uh, let me let me see if I can show you at 25 megahertz uh, with an amplitude of uh, no, sorry this is channel 2 it's at 25 uh, megahertz with an amplitude of uh, well the current is a square wave let me convert it to a sine wave with an amplitude of uh, 70 bm so again 25 megahertz at 70 bm instead uh, channel 1 uh, is a uh, 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 minus 25 uh, dbm uh, signal which is not so strong it's pretty weak at uh, 25.017 megahertz okay so 25 megahertz and 17 kilohertz and so uh, these uh, two signals uh, let me uh, see if i can show you again the view from the top are going to my um, to my mixer so the rf port is receiving the weak signal at uh, minus 25 dbm the one at 25 megahertz and uh, something um, at 17 kilohertz and uh, this port, uh, local oscillator, is uh, receiving the 25 megahertz at 70 bm uh, uh, signal. Uh, the output of the mixer, this IF port, uh, is going uh, in two directions. This direction goes directly to uh, the spectrum analyzer here. And this other direction goes to the low pass filter. Uh, and as I said already, the low pass filter is going to the amplifier. And the result of the amplification is going to the oscilloscope okay so let's uh, let's see well, what's going on with uh, the aid of the uh, of the spectrum analyzer so let me actually show you uh, perhaps i can put uh, the spectrum analyzer here so you can see both the real spectrum analyzer and its uh, digital output uh, and the video um, so let me um, zoom on the first uh, 50 megahertz so, uh, of, the, of the spectrum. So at the moment, uh, the start frequency, let me put it uh, 9 kilohertz. 
at the moment uh, this is the first uh, well actually let me do the first uh, uh, 60 megahertz just to be more clear okay so um, uh, we have uh, here in the middle more or less uh, at 25 megahertz this is basically the local oscillator and the RF signal passing through the um, the, the mixer uh, but the, as you can see they are at minus uh, 50 dB so they are greatly attenuated the first result of the mixer the first products are at uh, 25 uh, uh, it's basically the sum of the two signals so 25 plus 25.17 kilohertz mean 50 megahertz and 17 kilohertz and also at uh, the baseband uh, we get uh, the difference of the two signal which is just 17 kilohertz okay so let me just uh, zoom at the beginning uh, of the spectrum so stop frequency at uh, 30 kilohertz um, so let's see what's going on here uh, the spectrum now is uh, sweeping from 9 to 30 kilohertz and here we have our 17 kilohertz signal so basically what uh, this mixer is doing at the moment uh, is basically down converting uh, the signal at 25 megahertz and 17 kilohertz directly to baseband so just uh, 17 kilohertz okay if i change the uh, rf signal if i increase its frequency a bit uh, so let me do that uh, now it's seven it's 25 uh, megahertz and 17 kilohertz and I'm just increasing by one kilohertz and as you can see this is reflected immediately in the spectrum uh, analyzer so yeah the down conversion is working perfectly really and um, I get some noise as you can see uh, here I don't know what that is but consider that all these uh, circuits are well the amplifier is on the on a breadboard and uh, anyway even the mixer here is uh, as you can see is not shielded or anything so it's normal to get uh, some noise at uh, here i have minus 70 db anyway um, so now this this is uh, what uh, this signal composed of this uh, um, 22 kilohertz uh, at the moment uh, signal but also well i mean everything so frequency let me show you the full signal again let's say 200 megahertz so we see like, the first one so all this thing okay this complex signal is going to the uh, low pass filter this is blocking uh, our uh, greatly attenuating anything above uh, 10 megahertz going to the amplifier and uh, going to the um, oscilloscope and as you can see here the oscilloscope is showing me the 17 uh, kilohertz okay and uh, the amplifier is taking care of increasing the very low uh, well let me go back a second to the to the spectrum analyzer so uh, stop frequency let's put it let's put again 30 kilohertz so the signal is at uh, as you can see here at minus 32 dbm so that's a very very weak signal um, here instead it has uh, uh, about uh, 0.4 volts a peak to peak okay so this could go directly to some headphones it's sufficiently strong to be heard uh, uh, using some headphones or you can insert it to some speaker so this is an audio signal and uh, so yeah it's pretty cool this is basically uh, the essential of a front end of a radio just a receiver of course it's a basic director uh, conversion receiver but it's uh, I mean I'm surprised it works uh, it works uh, so nicely and um, yeah again if I reduce uh, uh, the, the frequency of the signal uh, it's now 25 megahertz uh, and 19 kilohertz I reduce here and as you can see I get uh, the down converted signal at baseband greatly amplified so it's it's incredible how well this works and uh, something interesting is that uh, yeah let me actually zoom back here at the moment the um, so I hope you can see yeah kind of well let me right at the moment uh, channel 2 which is the local uh, oscillator is set as you can see as a perfect sine wave at uh, 25 megahertz 
with uh, 7 uh, dBm of power. Now, this is uh, great, but um, in practice, it's much easier to produce uh, square waves in circuits, okay? Because, uh, you know, it's just simpler, uh, you don't need to filter uh, away anything. So, uh, it would be desirable to use a square wave as a local oscillator and not just a pure sine wave. So, let's see what happens if I use um, oh, um, a square wave instead. So, this is the result, and as you can see at the baseband, nothing changed. And um, indeed, uh, my signal at uh, baseband is still perfectly fine here, uh, even using a square wave as a, um, as a local oscillator. So let me show you what, what is the difference. Uh, the difference is visible only at high frequencies, but not at low frequencies, in particular at baseband. So frequency, stop frequency, 1.8 gigahertz. So now the spectrum analyzer is showing me all the spectrum. And so, as you can see, there are harmonics all the way up to, I would say, clearly visible up to, up to well, 1.4 gigahertz. Instead, if I had um, a sine wave as a, as a signal, as you can see, it's, uh, it's much cleaner. Uh, it's a much cleaner, um, you know, the result of the, the mixing is, is cleaner, of course, but who cares, right? So, um, it's not really important since uh, this is a down converter, it's not an up converter. And uh, so, you, it's in a square wave, which is uh, much easier to produce in practice. I still get a perfectly fine uh, signal at baseband. So, yeah, um, the next step, uh, we'll try to um, use this little mixer, connect it to a speaker and uh, here and see if I can... Uh, really decode some CW messages and uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, thank you uh, very much for following. If you have any question, please uh, feel free to, to write in the comment section below. Bye bye.